Live Well, My World of Visually Impaired Photography on an iPhone, presented by Vicky Blento of Sutton Vision on the 17th of March 2022. About Live Well. Live Well is a series of events aimed at helping people make the most of life with sight loss. Live Well is a collaborative project between seven local independent sight societies, which include Sight Advice South Lakes in Cumbria, My Sights Knots in Nottingham, Sight Airedale in the Airedale area of North and West Yorkshire, Support for Sight in Mid and West Essex, Sight Concern Worcestershire in Worcestershire, Sutton Vision in the London Borough of Sutton, and Outlookers in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. Hello and welcome to uh, this uh, week's Future Vision Live Well event. Uh, we're pleased to have Vicky Blenthoff, who's the Assistive Technology Coordinator at Sutton Vision. And Vicky is going to be talking about uh, visually impaired photography on the iPhone. So over to you, Vicky. Thank you very much. Well, as um, um, Anthony just said, um, I am Vicky Blenko. I'm Assistive Technology Coordinator at Sutton down here in South London on a beautiful, beautiful sunny morning. And I'm going to speak to you about my world of visually impaired photography on iPhone. There's a photograph of my good self there taken by my daughter. I'm a white woman of a certain age. I have shoulder length brown hair, glasses, and I'm wearing a bright orange shirt in that shot. A um, couple of um, statements just before I start. Um, all the photography and all the presentation contained in this, this, this talk has been prepared by myself and all the photographs taken by myself, apart from that one you've just seen. Um, this was probably originally, originally um, advertised as smartphone photography. Due to time constraints, I've kept it to iPhone photography for the moment, but a lot of the effects can be transcribed at least onto a Samsung mobile, which I have tried out on the S21. I'm not sure about other ones as yet. And just as a warning, I do use the, the, our friend, Mr. Siri, quite a lot. So I'm hoping that your devices won't go off in the background. OK, so please support me on Instagram. This is my tag, at BI Vicky Photo. My little Memoji is a um, portrait of myself wearing a white baseball cap to keep the sun off my eyes. My daughter put two large red hearts over my eyes to make it quite distinctive. There's quite a few visually impaired and blind photographers out there on Instagram, but most of them don't describe their photographs using alt text. I do. So you will also get the full description of my photographs. There's one on the right here, which you may or may not be able to see, but it's a close up of a pink flower. It's got a black center and a couple of little orangey bits on the side. OK, because it's a live well session as well, I'm going to give a little bit about my background. Um, I trained and studied to be a chartered building surveyor for nine years. After two years of working as a fully qualified surveyor, I was diagnosed with Stargardt's. So I lost all my central vision, which was my ability to do my job really and to read text. I stayed employed for 10 years thanks to JAWS on my computer at work in a more administration role. And then I was made redundant and I remained unemployed for over nine years. Um, this did give me a chance, however, to bring up my uh, young family who were in primary school at the time. And then I started getting to know some visually impaired people around my local area through playing tennis at my local tennis centre and then through coffee and bookshops. I was starting to get out into London, doing audio described tours of museums and theatre trips. Then we had lockdown. We all know what happened then. So in the um, pandemic, I decided to reinvent myself. Well, it kind of sort of happened, really. Um, I spent a lot of time on, on, on the web. I attended webinars about assistive, assistive technology. I joined the RNIB as a volunteer moderator on their Facebook, one of their Facebook groups. I'm a member of the Sight Loss Council. Never yet met the people, but it's all been online, obviously. I've been part of the ITV TV audio described forum, which has been very interesting. I also realized that I had 40,000 photographs on my, on my Mac. And so I started trawling through those and this is what kicked in my reinterest in, in iPhone photography. 
I've always had an interest in photography. And anyway, so on, on the back of all this, in February 2021, as a blind old bird, I managed to land myself a new job and a new career. And that was about 13 months ago now, and I've been thoroughly enjoying sharing my love of technology. So that's my background story. Photograph I've got on the side I took last summer on a holiday in Shropshire. It's um, the bridge leading into Ludlow. It's reflected in the water of the river underneath. There's a grassy bank in the front and some trees bordering the sides of the photograph. Okay, so my love of photography. Now it turns out um, that I, I started photography when I was 10, because I remember getting my first Instamatic camera, which had a little cassette that went in the back and obviously it had to be sent off to be um, developed. Um, after my O levels, showing my age, um, I did a week's course in photography um, at a local college and we were given a big um, SLR camera and we were told to go and take some pictures and we learned how to develop the negatives and then we did the prints from the negatives using all those chemicals and things which was fantastic and I guess that was probably a bit of inspiration because my 18th birthday present from my dear father was my own C um, SLR camera and this had the big the nice big 70 to 210 millimeter zoom lens and I spent many many a happy time I'm taking photographs on that don't forget all this time I'm still fully sighted um, and around um, the turn of the century, which was actually about the time that my eye started to fail, um, the, the digital cameras were all the rage. Now, this was fantastic for me because with my eyes going, this obviously gave a small, and if you, some of you remember, it gave a small sort of two inch little snapshot on the back of the camera, which you could move around. So you didn't have to put it to your eye, which of course for anybody with a visual impairment is, is quite crucial because it meant I didn't fall over myself and I could sort of see all around me what was happening and also then managed to try to give my best ability to actually get it on the screen. Um, after I was made redundant, I came to get my first ever um, iPad mini generation one. And the reason I got the small one is because it fitted into my handbag at the time with the kids. And I started taking photographs on that. And they were getting away with nothing at this point because I could then photograph their homework, zoom in, and they weren't getting away with anything. I mean, I couldn't do all the English stuff, but the maths, you know, they weren't getting away with anything at that point. And I then just spent, um, took family shots on it, holidays and all that sort of thing when it was safe to do so. I got my, whoops, I got my first iPhone, um, it was a 4S. I've got that in 2014 when my son was 10. And um, that obviously then I started taking my family snapshots on that um, because it was smaller, it fitted in my pocket, fitted in my handbag, as you know. And from then I moved to, I think, to a five, to a seven. And um, just before the pandemic, I was on a seven plus, which had the double camera on the back, which allowed a zoom in method as well, which I absolutely loved. Um, beginning of lockdown, I got myself an, an iPhone 13, an iPad, um, Pro 12.9 inch, which has been revolutionary because it is such a lovely big clear screen. And that's where I, my photographs go from my iPhone now onto that. And that is where I look at them, edit them, get rid of them, uh, do, do, do as you will. And then my first ever brand new iPhone, I got the iPhone 13 Pro Max because I thought I deserved it after getting my job. So that's where I am now. This is just a few little snapshots of what I took back in the day. So these are literally just snap and shoot. That's my kids um, playing in the sea on a beach, I think in Devon. Um, the one on the left here is my parents and my children in a museum in London on a spiral staircase caught my eye. The lovely spirals going up, the light coming from Coppola on the top. In the top left, I've got my daughter in a very blurry tree, just a quite nice photograph, and my son, bottom right is um, on a rope crossing trying to cross a stream somewhere in Devon so that's my background story so let's get on to the real stuff now so I found photography as a visually impaired person so I'm going to run through with you how you can open your camera app in multiple ways how to take a picture in a number of different ways Um, I'm going to describe it with and without voiceover because it's a fully accessible camera app. I'm going to show you how to use your voice to take photographs. 
I'm going to run through a quick guide to the camera app, um, the modes and controls. I'm going to talk about a burst mode, which is fantastic for moving objects. I'm going to describe how you can set up image description when you're looking at your photos afterwards in the Photos app on your phone, iPad, Mac, wherever. And then if there's time, I'm going to show some tips and tricks of my own photography at the end. So that's the plan. So let's get started. Right, here we go. How to open the camera. So the lock screen is where we open up before we put in our face, our fingerprint or our passcode. That's what we call the lock screen. Um, I've got a little video clip here, which I'm hoping will work. If it's quiet, I will attempt to talk over it. So this is a demonstration of how to wake up your phone. You don't have to put your fingerprint or your, or your face print or passcode in. You can open this up from the lock screen, which is really, really invaluable. So the first thing you can do is you can once it's awake, you can just swipe with three fingers to the left. You can say, hey Siri, take picture. That will open straight up into the camera app. And on iOS 15, there is a little icon on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, which if you can navigate to double tap, that will also open up. So Let's see I'm if this works. Going to Anthony, can it be heard? From the lock screen. And in fact, this is a completely black screen as though the camera was just lying down and we can say by using our best friend hey siri take picture viewfinder focus zero people there we go and we can find our way take to picture. take picture Button. and we can take the picture actions available so i'm going to switch that off and we're going to go this time from the wake up screen so when we pick up our phones we quite often get the lock screen and and this is where we would either put in our face or our fingerprint or even our passcode. But this time I'm just going to... 2120, try again. Hey Siri, take picture. Z camera, take picture, tilt left. There we go. And actually, I think we're actually on the take picture. So let's just try a double tap. Yes, it took us straight to the take picture, which it usually does. Okay, let's go tilt again. This time I'm just going to demonstrate again from that same... Again. From that same lock screen, this time I'm going to do a three finger swipe to the left. Tilt viewfinder, focus unlocked, image. Con this time it took us to the viewfinder for Container. some reason. Mug. Wood. Zero people. But it still worked as you can see. And the last way was on the lock screen at the bottom. If you've got iOS 15, there is actually a little camera icon in the bottom which we will be able to navigate to. 21 to try again. I know it's somewhere down this bottom corner. Camera, can, camera, there we go. Button, or I, of course, I could off, but camera, button, just swipe to it, double camera, tap anywhere on the screen, and picture, there we are. Button. And actually, we're ready already on the take picture one there. So again, we could go forward and take our picture just with a double tap. Zero the same people way, take picture. Tilt left. In the same way that we do with normal voiceover. So there are three methods to wake up the camera using voiceover. Tilt left. Okay, I hope you managed to hear that. I apologize it being quiet. I don't know why that is. Okay, so I've got another little demonstration um, without voiceover. In fact, I might not even play this one. I'll probably skip it. So basically this time, same detail, you can swipe this time just with one finger. Um, we can also use the Hey Siri, take picture function, which will open up into the camera straight away and hopefully be ready to take the picture. And the, the button, if you've got iOS 15 on the bottom right hand corner, you do a sort of funny little sort of haptic on it and that will take you straight to the camera as well. So I think I'm going to skip this video because we don't really need to know that. Um, other ways to take the camera, um, to take to open up the camera rather is obviously from the home screen. So this is after we've um, waked up with our voice print, um, our voice, no, it's not our voice, our, our passcode or our face or our fingerprint and we might be in have been doing things in other apps now there's two places by default it's usually the camera icon is, is a photograph it's an icon literally of an old-fashioned camera it's usually by default in the top right hand screen personally I have it in the dock which means it doesn't matter what app I've got open and I've got about four pages of apps on this phone I could always know where my camera is to go fetch it so from the home screen, now this works um, the same with um, 
voiceover on or off it's it's the same it's the same detail so basically we can tap on the um, camera icon obviously so we can either do a, a one tap have it in a place where you know where it is so you can quickly find it if you don't use voiceover if you're using voiceover navigate to it in the normal in the normal manner and double tap and that will take you oops take you straight in there apologies for that um, <clears throat> another way is to hey, hey siri take picture that also works the same as it did from the lock screen, but this time we have another one, which is Hey Siri, open camera. And just for a note, this doesn't work from the lock screen. You have to actually have activated, you actually have to be in the live camera. Anyway, let's get on to business, how to take a picture. Now there's various different ways for taking a picture, believe it or not, it's not just using the take picture shutter button, which is in the middle bottom of your iPhone by default. Now in the um, with the phones with the, the original home button, it was relatively easy to find because you could locate your finger on the home button and basically just move up and tap and chances are you'd get it without voiceover. With voiceover on obviously you can um, you can do that. So the first most obvious way is to find your way to the um, um, take picture function which as I said usually activates straight straight away when you open the camera app by default it usually goes to that with voiceover without voiceover without voiceover you do have to find your own way to it because obviously you can't do any of the scrolling mechanisms what you'll do is you'll kick yourself into a different mode on the screen which i've done so many times and missed my photographs but that's that's another story oh i've done it again hang on um another way and i don't know a lot of people don't know this is you could use your volume up and down keys on the side of the camera so if you can't find quickly with or without voiceover the take picture icon, you can just use either of those. You just take a picture using the up and down volume keys. Um, we also have now voice control, which I will come back to in a minute. Um, this you can use Siri to switch this on and you can now take a picture using just your voice. Um, just to the left here. Uh, to the right is a picture of a church somewhere in um, Shropshire. Um, I've got a picture of my, a bench in the foreground with my daughter sitting on it, showing the back of her head when she had red hair. And there's lots of sort of long grass and wild flowers in the foreground. OK, now there's other ways to take your photographs as well. Here I have a shot of two birds on a bird feeder in my garden. And I managed to take that remotely. So we can also, if you have wired earphones, and you have a volume up and down button on those. Those also work. Depending on the quality of the earphones, there's sometimes a bit of a delay, but it means you can be holding your phone in one hand and you can just completely just use the wire coming out of your ear to take your shot on the left-hand side. There are also remote control Bluetooth, Bluetooth devices. They usually come with a tripod. This photograph, I had a tripod outside with my camera set up on it. I'd lined up the shot. I then walked away and I was sat in my kitchen looking through the window. And as I saw the birds flutter down out of the corner of my eye, I just snapped away and I got that shot. I've now moved on to another screen. I've got a robin here I took on my patio. And this was one morning. I was sitting outside having a cup of coffee, listening to my audio book through a pair of wired earphones. Long came the robin. I managed to quickly get into the camera app, line up took a few shots and I came out with this one that was using my wired earphones. And here to the, to the right is another photograph of um, a bird taken again with a tripod, tripod even on using the remote control. Okay, so I'm now gonna run through some um, using, using voiceover tips. Um, just quickly, just to describe the photograph to that, it's a beautifully, beautifully colored uh, rainbow crossing um, just outside our civic offices and I was desperate to catch it. I saw this lady starting to cross the road and I fumbled and fumbled to get the camera app open. I managed to get this one shot because so it's rather fun because she's in black, she's got a red umbrella and she's holding a shopping bag on this multicoloured crossing. So I just thought it was a fun shot. I was very pleased to get that one but I only managed to get the one shot. Anyway, back to voiceover. Voiceover will tell you what is on the screen and if you touch the middle of the screen, which is called the viewfinder, it will tell you what's on the screen using artificial intelligence, which is a fantastic, fantastic little thing. So it'll tell you about people, trees, fences, all sorts of stuff. Very, very useful if you've got very, very low vision. I mean, I don't personally use voiceover because I can kind of see enough to, to get the general picture on the screen. 
but it's very, very useful. It's very, very accessible. Um, you can double tap when the take picture action is active. As I, I was trying to demonstrate in those photographs, by default, you generally open up with voiceover. It opens up and it says take picture, double tap to activate. You just double tap anywhere on the screen once you've lined up your shot. What I also found purely by chance is the magic two finger double tap also takes a shot just like that from anywhere on the screen, which is absolutely fantastic. It's the same one we use for quick dictation in WhatsApp messages that some of you might use. So that's another way of doing it very quickly. You can use the up volume and down volume keys in the normal manner that I just explained just now. That works just as well with voiceover. And obviously we still also have voice control, which works very well with and without voiceover. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to play this video. Take picture button. Okay. Swipe up or down to select a... I'm here in my garden looking at a hanging basket. I've just opened up the camera app by default. Take picture button. It opens on... Swipe up or down picture. to select a custom action. Then double tap to activate. The take Zero pic people. The take picture function. So I can just double tap anywhere on the screen and that will take the photograph. What I want to just show you now is that if you tap... On viewfinder. viewfinder. Focus unlocked. Image. Double tap to focus. Plant. Possible text. Uh, IL star L star I. Imatic video photo portrait pan. Agriculture. Possible text. Uh, uh, take picture. Button. Okay, Swipe so up I've... or down to select a custom action. So I've come off the viewfinder, so I just Zero tapped people. my finger in the middle of the screen and it gave me all that information. I mentioned foliage. It sometimes mentions flowers. But it can give you a good idea about what you've got in the shot, which can be very, very useful if you've got very little vision. Anyway, back to shooting photographs, we can also use what I think Apple call the magic tap, which is two fingers on the screen. So this is the two tap. finger double tap. That also took the photograph. The third Zero way people. we can take the photograph, I'm just going to go in a little closer here, is by using the down volume button. That was the volume down key. I took the picture. I'm now going to use the up volume button. Let's get that one. And that's the volume and up key. What we can also do with the up button, if you've got it set up in the settings, is what we call a burst mode, which I'm going to demonstrate later. Oh yes, and this Zero is a demonstration people. of Hold burst down, mode. We'll take a series of shots very, very quickly. One photo taken. So I don't know whether you heard that a little ch -ch 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 sound. So that took about six shots, all within very, very quick succession. OK, I apologise if you can't hear that, but there's one of the photographs that came out of that close up of some white pansy type flowers in a hanging basket in my garden. OK, using your voice. Now, this works with and without voiceover. Basically, you need to activate um, voice control. You just say, hey, Siri. Um, turn on voice control and that works that works well and obviously he activates that um, the commands are you can just you don't need to use the mr siri for this one you just you can say turn volume down and you can also say tap take picture they both work and this photograph here is a close-up of a daffodil I'm actually holding that in my left hand and I've got the photograph um, with the viewfinder on it in my right hand. And what I managed to do is I managed to take that photograph by saying, turn down volume. So that meant I didn't have to worry about finding, finding anything on the screen to touch. I just did it with my voice. And this is great obviously for people who have dexterous, if that's the right word, problems with their fingers. So. Hey Siri, turn on voice control, say turn volume down. Um, Actions available. So there we go. And now that. Okay, now I've got another little video here, People. which I'm hoping will work. Button. I'm here in my garden again to demonstrate voice control. And I will warn you that okay. it is quite verbose. However, I'm just going to just tap on the beef. Viewfinder. Focus unlock. Image. Double tap to focus. Foliage. Petunia. Possible text. Uh, IL star L. Imatic video photo portrait pan. 
Foliage. A few. Take picture. Button. So that's actually the Actions best. available. Quite a good description of what we got on the screen. So. Zero goes. people. Turn down volume. Hooray. Tap to take picture. So I hope you heard that, but basically I said turn down volume. And I also said tap take picture. And this is one of the shots I got. Um, so this is some um, purple or red petunia type flowers in another hanging basket. OK, I'm now going to run through a guide to the camera app. It's all completely accessible with voiceover. Firstly, we have the standard photo mode, which obviously we use all the time. It's the default one that opens up on the screen. What we also have, and I think this is just in phones which have more than one camera on the back, so either two or three cameras, there is now this fantastic mode called Portrait, which is incredibly extensive. The new one on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, I've barely touched the sides of you. There's different lighting in there, there's different filters, something called photographic styles. Um, I haven't really delved very far into it, but what it does do is it has this depth effect going on whereby if you look in this picture here, this is one of my clients, Ted, who is 86 years young. He's in my office um, practicing his Hey Siri. And if you can see, he's nice and clearly in focus and but behind him is blurred. And that is due to a thing called depth effect. So we also have panoramic where you can take a very long wide shot. Basically you stand still and you sort of pan around trying to keep the phone as level as possible. And it takes a very, very long stop sh shot. You have to do a stop and stop and start on that one on the, on the tap activate button. And then the other mode we have is video. Um, now I, I'm not going into video in this presentation, but there are three modes, generally three modes. There's video, there's slow-mo, and there's time lapse. And in the modern phones with the multiple cameras, there's something called cinematic mode. Um, and as we all know, everything is becoming more and more visual these days. So I think that's where that one comes. So here's just some examples of portraits I took of my daughter. The one on the left I took with my iPhone 7 Plus. Um, she's beautifully focused uh, with a blurred background. She's just looking down, reading a book with some light coming in through a conservatory window. In the top right, um, I used, I experimented one of the um, lighting settings in the, in the new portrait mode on my iPhone 13 Pro. And what it did was it, it put her like in a spotlight as though in a theater. So the background is, is, is black and she is visible in it. And it just did that within the camera app. But I do know that you can also put these effects in afterwards. So don't panic about that. I was just playing around to show you guys. Um, in the bottom, I've just got a stat, fairly standard photograph. But again, I've managed to highlight more light onto her face and the background is nicely blurred. And just to say, portraits are not just for people. Many a time I've accidentally gone onto portrait and come across shots like this um, when I've gone back to look what I've got. So this is some poppies which are nicely in focus at the back, and there's a blurred background. The one thing you do need to be slightly careful with portrait mode is that the person or the object needs to be, I think, within between two and eight feet away. There's some sort of restriction. There is a little message that comes up on the screen, if you can see it, I think it's in yellow, and basically it won't use the portrait mode function with this depth effect um, if you're not within that distance, but it does tell you that, and with voiceover, it'll say whether the depth effect is on or off. What it also does with voiceover is it will also tell you where the face is in the picture. So that can help with you trying to um, get the, the face of the person or, or the object that you're trying to focus in the center. That should help with that. Here's an example of a panorama. Now this, I was out with some lovely VI friends. Hey guys. And we were at the theater, the National Theater in London on the South Bank at an audio described performance of Wuthering Heights. And as we finished, we were allowed to have a drink in the members bar on the third floor. And my friend Alison and I immediately saw the potential for a photograph and we nipped out onto the balcony. And this is what we got. So this is a panorama. It's slightly, it slightly, it slightly skews the, um, the foreground, but you, you get the idea. It's a really wide, thin shot of a long, of a long scene, and that's in central London. Now, burst. I love the burst mode. 
this is going to be great for you guys once you learn how to do it. So burst mode, I tried to demonstrate on that video. I don't know whether it actually um, worked or not. Um, so basically what this does is um, I was using the up arrow, the up volume key, and I was holding it down. And what it was doing is it was taking a very, very quick succession of photographs called this burst. So of course, it's fantastic for taking pictures of moving things like children. So this is my son leaping off some rocks as he's prone to do, even though he's now 17. So I managed to catch him in this shot. He's in midair, his legs are flying, his arms are at the back and he's got a long coat on which is flying out the back and he's silhouetted against the sea and um, the sky in the background. So what you can do after you've taken the burst is you can choose which frame you want. So it's like a series of frames and you can keep the ones that where they're not on the screen and you can just choose your best one, which is amazing. And you can get some really fantastic shots. That's quite good for us visually impaired people. Um, now, the way you can set this up in old phones, it used to be the take picture button used to used to be able to just in, without voiceover, used to be able to just hold it down and it would do that function. I've not figured it out yet on the iPhone Pro. It's a slightly strange. They've changed the movement, the gesture of it, which is rather annoying. So what I suggest you guys do to give this a go is if you go into your camera settings, um, you go down, there's a toggle button where you can toggle on. Um, use volume up key for burst. And if that is on, then that function of the upper volume key, if you press it once, it will just take a standard photograph. But if you hold it down, it will take that succession of burst photographs. And here's some examples of this. So in the first photograph on the left, we have the lovely young guy, Dog Kane, coming out of the sea in Eastbourne last October. So his ears are pricked up. He's got lots of, he's looking like he's having a lot of fun. He's got water, the sea splashing up around his legs. That was taken on a burst. On the right hand side, I've got a close up of a pink flower. Now I heard bees flying around. I knew they were going towards this flower. Couldn't see when they were landing on it, but I managed to get the flower in the focus, took a burst shot, and here we are. So we've got a pink flower with a yellow middle and a bee of some sort sitting on it. This photograph is in memory of a client of mine who's now look Joe, who's no longer with us. He just loved my photographs of um, dandelion clocks and the bits coming off. So I've put this in here in his memory. And the seaside, catching photographs of waves is another lovely thing to do on bursts. And in this one, I've got this massive wave and a couple of kids underneath frolicking around. They're not my children, but you have got the back to them. OK, so now we go to camera controls. So this is largely controls to do with the, the, the photo app only, because portrait has its own set of controls obviously within it and panorama stands alone. So we have a function called live mode. What this does is if this is set up and there's a little or that these controls are usually along the top of the camera app and the, the live photo is usually on the top. Um, right hand and, and when it's activated it is bright yellow which I can just about see but you can have it on off or automatic and what this does is it takes as you take the shutter it takes a tiny bit of video about a second before and about a second afterwards so what you end up with is a little bit of movement in your photograph I think some people may call it 3d photos but I could be wrong there we also have um, flash you can have that on off or automatic Another control is a timer, which obviously you can set. And I don't know whether you saw that wiggle. I pressed the button a little bit, little bit too soon. I don't know whether any of you saw that photograph wiggle. I can't do it again without going back, but it's just a little bit of movement for about two seconds. So it's a rather a fun mode to do. We also have a more advanced ca ca camera mode, uh, camera controls, which I must admit, I don't, I don't generally fiddle around with because it's just too difficult. Um, and I haven't really explored them in great deep, deep depth yet. There's an aspect ratio. Now, the standard is four by three. So four up, three along, whether you're in portrait or, of course, in landscape. And these can be changed after, after the events. You don't need to worry about taking if you want to take a long, thin nine by 16. Don't worry about setting it up in there. You can actually control it afterwards in the editing mode. So you can change it or make it square even. Uh, we have low light. 
This is all about night photography, and this has been much improved, I think, in the 12 cameras, the 12 Pros anyway, and the 13 Pro. I haven't explored that yet, um, but it creates a sort of slight delay, I think, to try to improve the um, quality of the shot at night. There's photographic styles, which you can apply before you take your photograph. But again, not much good for me because I wouldn't be able to see it on the screen. I just want to get something in the shot. So I'm not worried about that. And there are filters which you can also put on as you take the shot. But equally, these things you can do afterwards. So this cat here, this is my neighbour's cat looking out of a window. He's a black and white cat. And there was a bit of colour in the background. And I just changed it to black and white using a filter. Because I just thought that was more, more, more made, made, made the, the, the shot more impactful, really. And he's a beautiful cat. And, oh, I've missed out one, which is exposure. Now, exposure is all about controlling the light coming into a camera. And this is very much a feature of um, proper, proper grown-up photography using big cameras, really, where you, you control all these things. And I think this is quite a new function in, in, in iPhones to have this level. There's quite a lot of different settings in there. But again, I've not really explored those because I just, I just haven't had the time, basically. Okay, so just to wrap up this section, I'm going to now describe how you can get image descriptions. Once you've taken all your lovely photographs, you can view them in the Photos app. Now, as I said, mine go up by iCloud from my phone onto my lovely new iPad 12.9 inch, where I can see and edit them equally. I had them also on my Mac, and you could probably put them onto other gadgets because that is the only way I can really see what I've taken. So that's another tip and trick. Find the biggest screen you can to look at your photographs on. Um, so to get this image description, in VoiceOver settings, under accessibility, of course, if we go to VoiceOver and then we go to VoiceOver recognition, I've just got a slide shot here highlighting VoiceOver recognition. Um, we can go to, there's a few settings in here, and we want to have image description toggled on. Now, it does involve a bit of data coming down, um, a, a few megabytes to make this work. Um, but then when you switch that on, if you then go into your photographs, you should find that it will give a broad description of what they are, which can be very, very useful. If they don't work, if that doesn't work, there's a just below this screen, it says apply to apps. And in that, you just need to make sure that the photograph the photos app is ticked on but you want the camera function off because otherwise what it'll start trying to do, it'll start trying to describe what it's actually seeing in the camera, which is basically a cell phone screen or a screenshot. So we don't need that information. What we want is the information about whether there's a flower or a tree or a fence in it. So I'm going to try to play this, this, this video. It's very, very short, just showing some oh, image descriptions. Favorite, the 13th of March. White flowers on the branches of a tree. Photo, the 14th of March. A grass field with trees and a fence. Photo, the 14th of March. A group of purple flowers growing together. Photo, 06 March. A group of cars in a parking lot next to a group of trees and building. So hopefully if you heard that, I think you'll agree um, that it gives quite a good visual reminder of what's on the screen if you've got very little vision. So that's my end of my presentation. I'm hoping I've got a few minutes to spare just to talk you through some little tips and tricks of how I take my photographs. Um, none of it's rocket science. Basically, I've got no central vision, so I can't see any detail. So as I'm walking out and about, I just look for shapes, contrasts, colors, anything really that catches my eye. And this is what I'm going to run through. So on here, for instance, I've got um, a very, very unusual sort of really sweeping, almost looks like brush strokes cloud formation. This is just my local park here. And that just caught my eye, got the camera out, had a snap. And actually, I think it's rather effective. Quite a lot of my photographs go in the bin, but there we go. And I would also advise, as I said, looking at it on a big screen. And there's also lots of editing techniques that you can use and apps if you want to then improve and make changes to your photographs. So let's just carry on. So here, this caught my eye. I was coming back from the shops. This is some, some houses in my road. There was a massive puddle in front of them and there was just a lovely reflection. And I took this photograph and I'm very pleased with it because it's also quite symmetrical. So that's another reason I, I this caught my eye. I think I, I got down quite low to catch this one, took a few shots. This was the best one. 
Um, this is around the corner from my house, a tower block, but beautiful cotton ball clouds on a blue sky and a white um, tower block in the front with a bit of shrub, bit, bit of green stuff in the foreground. Again, just the clouds caught my eye. So instead of taking a picture of clouds, I decided to stick the tower block in the middle of it to give a better effect. I think that's quite fun. Now, this was lovely. This was just a, a few weeks ago. There was the most stunning sunset as I was on my way to save my local Sainsbury's. It's about four minutes from my house. And the colours were just amazing. So I just snapped this one. I've got a little car coming towards it in the front. The building is going down the right hand side of the photograph and the sky is just the most amazing sort of orangey colour. When I came out from shopping, it had all gone. So you have to capture the moment. And that's the beauty of having these quick techniques for opening your camera. This is a rather lovely, this is another reflection photograph. This was in Eastbourne last October, beautiful sunny morning. I was up early for about the first time ever. And this was just literally the wet sand. I could see that buildings were reflecting off it. So I got a snap and again, it's quite nice and symmetrical. So that worked well. This is a photograph of just some green hills. I, we were stuck in the traffic jam trying to get down this very narrow road in um, Shropshire. And it was a sort of funny cloudy day, but the foreground was nice and green and the background was kind of sort of blurred out and grey skies and all the rest of it. But this caught my eye because there's some little trees that are standing up on the brow of the green bit of hill in the front. So again, not a massively interesting photograph, but a bit of fun. This, um, another bit of fun, we were in, on the same holiday, we were coming through a, 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 a cutting through a, a field which had cows in it. And I spotted the tree on the horizon and then the cows started charging. And I managed to grab this shot. It's not the best shot in the world, but it's quite fun. So you can kind of see that there's cows on the, on the brow of the hill sort of silhouetted. And there's a tree on the left-hand side and there's some fluffy clouds on a blue sky. So again, just a bit of fun. But I managed to grab the shot. This one was taken at, I think, Stokesley Castle. This was just taken through a, a sort of window or gap or something in the stonework. There was just a nice bit of shape outside. I just decided to take a snap, but it's quite effective looking through spaces. There's all sorts of things you can do. This is one I was at my in-laws the other weeks. Um, the sun was going down. I decided to make a little walk. Not particularly interesting path, but the path splits off in different ways. It's nicely framed by trees ends up being quite a nice shot. Why not? Here's another one looking back down the path. So we've got a little road here and it's kind of sort of weaving its way into the foreground. You've got different depths of trees higher on the left and lower on the right. And it kind of sort of goes into the background with some sky. So again, I thought that was quite effective. This was up on the top of the hill, a load of big tall pine trees, not particularly interesting necessarily, but behind with the sunlight, I could see the green in the bottom sort of half of the photograph kind of through the trees with the blue sky above and actually with the sun coming through from the angle above actually it's actually quite an effective photograph I quite like that one and who's to say you have to take nice shots this is a, a supermarket trolley abandoned around the back of Victoria coach station I couldn't resist this I had to snap this so you've got a wall basically leading into the distance from the bottom right to the top left and actually what I didn't realize at the time there's actually a person coming towards me in the distance so that again gives another little focal point it's just a shopping trolley this I was up in central London this is just a part of bollards the city of London bollards which are very distinctive they are black they've got a white top and a red trim and I think the city of London logo on them and they are literally just going around following a little road going around a corner and I just again thought that was quite a nice shot to take so I snapped away and there it is. Um, here is Southwark Cathedral. I was just cutting through here. The sun was shining low off the top of the building. So you've got the kind of the tower and the top of the roof um, lit up almost yellow in the sunlight against a blue sky. There's a bit of foliage in the foreground above that and some little lamps hanging off a, some railings in the foreground. So again, just another shot. It caught my eye. I just managed to stop, managed to frame it up quite well. And don't forget, I don't see any of these photographs after I've taken them on my iPhone. I have to only get to see them when they come back and they upload onto my iPad. This one is just, an, a, I was talking about shapes. So this is just under a bridge, under the bridge at Kingston, Kingston upon Thames. And as I waited for the shot, I spotted out the corner of my eye some swans coming. So I waited until they were going under this bit of bridge. 
And so you've got this nice curve and you've got a bit of a focal interest, would have been a bit boring otherwise. So the good old swans swam into the shot. Okay, now we get on to my favorite, close up and macro photography. Now the new iPhone 13, particularly with um, the three cameras has an automatic, you can get really, really close up and it does it automatically. It somehow it does magic things with the lenses behind. Um, on my iPhone 7 Plus, I had to download another app to get the macro shots. And you can also get clip on, clip on um, zoom lenses and stuff to go on the back, but I could never get those lined up. So they didn't work very well for me. So actually this is, this is the magic of the new phone. And obviously the thing to do um, with close up is flowers, which is my favorite because I can get really close to them. You can put your hand in front of the screen. You can put your phone onto the flower and then just back off from it. So you can then get the shot all sorts of things you can do. And of course, animals is the other thing. So let's just have a look, look at a few shots here. So this is Stanley, a bearded dragon. I managed to get up quite close to him and he posed for me very nicely on his log in his cage. And I was absolutely amazed because I've held him, I feed him, I'm very fond of him. But until I took these photographs, I had no idea of the intricacy of all the little scales and whatever other bits that make up their different colors, their different sizes, fascinating. I would never have seen that if it hadn't been for that. This was in Pagham Harbor, just quite a nice shot again, some swans coming along. So I managed to grab those amongst the reeds. Ah, here's Barney, Barney the guide dog. This was taken in a pub, believe it or not. And um, it, I think it's actually on portrait mode as well. Barney is now sadly no longer with us. Um, but this is a beautiful photograph. Again, my iPhone 7 Plus, most of these. Oh, now this is in the local churchyard. We have a lot of cheeky squirrels there. And last autumn, again, my 7 Plus, I managed to kneel down. They came quite close. I managed to snap a few shots. So this is a squirrel looking at the camera in quite close up. They're quite photogenic. They've got really, really shiny black eyes um, once you get to zoom in. Here we are back in Eastbourne. Uh, we've got a, pit, a jetty, of a sort of wooden jetty thing going out into the sea or breakwater. What's interesting about this is that the sea is really low on one side, but the shingle is, was about waist height on the other side, on the right hand side. And there was a load of seagulls all sitting in a row. So I kind of got this shot in with them going down the side. Um, but it was rather nice because I haven't got any pictures of this here, but on the higher bit, they were wandering around just on that bit of shingle. So I was actually able to get quite close and without having to squat down, which is very difficult obviously to see the screen when you're squatting down and you can't see and find the shutter button. Um, so I managed to get some lovely shots of them um, quite close up there. This is one of my favorites. This was again in the Shropshire Hills. We um, uh, parked up at the top and I saw this white horse. I thought it was a statue to start with. So I leapt out thinking this is gonna be very exciting and went over and it was actually a photographic shoot going on with this lovely model here um, with blonde hair and wearing a white dress with her white horse. And they were basically just wandering around in these sort of malls above. So I did ask permission as to whether I could take some photographs and they were quite happy for me to do so. And I just love this one because she's just walking down a bit of hillside. There's purple gorse or some sort of shrub in the foreground and there's a hill in the background and beautiful blue sky. So I was, I was very, very pleased with that photograph. Okay, now onto flowers. Now this is one I took on my iPhone 13 um, only a few days ago of a white crocus in the sunlight. Look at the detail on this. I had no idea there's long pointy bits coming out. There's fluffy orange bits of pollen, the sun shining off the white petals, extraordinary. I've not seen this level of detail for over 20 years, even if I saw it before, because I probably didn't take any notice, did I? Okay, and also this is a snowdrop. I have never yet seen a snowdrop that I can remember. I've been looking for them for ages and I found some amongst some crocuses outside my, this is outside my office. So after a lot of trial and error, I managed to get a few snaps of snowdrops because they are tiny and I just don't see them. So I was very pleased with that one. This is just a blanched branch of blossom hanging down um, set against blue sky, but the sunlight was coming off. It seemed to be plumbing off it quite nicely and it's sharply in focus. That's the reason I took that one. This is a beautiful pink and orange. Reminds me of rhubarb and cream or strawberries and cream. I think it was a tulip from last year. I decided to take it from above to show the beautiful swirly 
petals that are about to open. So you can take shots. I, I like taking shots from slightly wacky angles. This was walking up to work. Um, there was a group just on somebody's forefront. There was a group of poppies growing. They formed quite a nice shape. And did you know that sometimes the centre is yellow? I didn't. But there's one here with a yellow centre instead of a black centre. So I would never have known that if I hadn't taken that picture. Now, this is another, this is a beautiful rose. I love taking photographs of roses. This one was quite fun because when I got in, got it up on my iPad here, I discovered there's a little ant or a little insect hiding in the petals. So you can zoom in and you can have a little look at that. I don't know whether it will work on here. No, it won't. OK, let's go. Let's go back out of that. So that was quite fun. So that gave me an idea for trying to get some insect photographs. And this is where burst mode can come in. So this, I can't remember where this was, but this bee or whatever it is on there was basically just having a really greedy time on this pollen. So I managed to get myself into, into position and into focus. And I could hear that I could, and the thing is with insects is you can hear them. So if you're, if you're aware that they are there and you think they are in front of you on these flowers, take some shots because you never know what you're going to get. And it's good fun. And obviously, they're so tiny insects, you know, I, can't, I, I barely see them flying around, let alone what they look like. Oh, now the other thing, which is fantastic, after a rain shower, petals with raindrops on are just beautiful. Look at this one. So there's a tiny little orange, uh, pink, bright pink bit coming out in a sort of funny pattern there, almost like a sort of little umbrella. And we've got beautiful shots with the pink background, pink centre and lovely big raindrops on the white petals. OK, and of course, finally, we can take shots of people. People do give an, a focal interest. Um, this is a picture here of my son, bored with mum taking photographs, but I managed to catch him against the sunset in Peacehaven. So he's actually silhouetted as well, which is quite effective. Here we are back at Eastbourne again, a lovely photograph of the pier reflecting off the sand at um, sunrise. And actually, there's another guy there with a tripod and he is reflected in the sand. So I saw him as a figure and quickly took this snap. Um, this was a portrait. Again, son doesn't like having photographs taken. So I took one of him from the side. He's just lying on his back, looking ahead across a bit of cliff to the needles. Actually, that was on the Isle of Wight. Um, this is one of my daughter just sitting at an open window. Again, bored with mum taking photographs, but it's quite a nice reflective shot of her with the background of the hills in the background. Um, this again was Eastbourne. I got down low for this one. There was a guy, he's got a, some sort of fishing net. He was, he was looking for something on the ground. I got him there against the sun. Um, and finally, we're almost at the end, don't worry. This was just a nice wiggly path um, amongst some big green trees in the summer. And just having, I would have been quite happy with the photograph as it was, because I just like the shapes, but having a picture of my husband walking along actually just gives a bit of bit more focal interest. So there we are. I'm going to try to shot, stop screen recording. Open to take questions. Hi, Vicky, it's Baron. Hi, Baron. I didn't realise there were so many ways you can um take a photograph i always thought it was the white button in the camera that's so exactly, you're saying yeah that's exactly why i wanted to share with you guys because even because this this all works for sighted people as well and nobody knows about it it's a little hidden trick so so yes give it a go i want everybody to go out and take photographs give it a go <laughs> and i quite like what you said there's a button on the right hand side where you take a photo and you get a little movement Oh, yes, that's called live photos. You have a scroll around. It's usually in the top corner, top right hand corner of your screen. Thank you. I didn't know about that because I always see it in Facebook when there's like a little movement and mm. people put on there. But I didn't realize I didn't know how to do that. So thank yeah. you for that as well. That's brilliant. Good. Thank you. Excellent presentation, actually. I think I'll, I'm going to go out and take some photos. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm seeing them. Thank you. Vicky, it's pretty. Can I just say that your photographs are absolutely beautiful? Oh, the flowers and the details. And you're absolutely right. Photography opens up a, a, a new world for us with, with some with some sight, you know. If we've 
we lost some sight, we've still got a little bit. You can literally zoom in and you'd see so much that you wouldn't normally see. So thank you for sharing that. Really, really enjoyed your um, photography and also the burst. Um, can you, when I'm taking bursts, I thought, oh, I've taken this by accident. But when you delete them, it deletes all of them, doesn't it? So how do you save just the one? Do you screenshot it or something? No, no, no. What you can do is in, in the Photos app, um, you don't go to the edit button, but along the top in the middle, it says, um, I can't remember what it says now. It says something like select. And if you tap that, what it does is it brings them all up across the screen. Oh. So you, you can move across and there's a little blue um activate button at the bottom so if you can see that i mean it probably works with voiceover um and there's a little blue button so the ones you you click on blue are the ones you get to keep and then you go it goes done and it says do you want to keep everything or do you want to just keep the ones that you've selected oh thank you very much because when i've taken photographs i think i love this and when i go in and i thought oh no i don't want to delete them all but i've ended up deleting them all summer yes time. yeah so thank you for that thank you Perfect. Thank you. Great presentation. Um, Vicky, I know you said you're not doing videos, but I always have problem switching the video on. How do you switch the video on by, with voiceover? What do you say? I'm not sure what you said. There will, there will be a voice control for it. I would imagine if you... Yes, there is a voice control for it. I think you can start recording or if you're on, if you've got the video mode activated, if you said tap, take picture, that might work because that activates that button or it might be tap, take recording. I think, okay. you'll, I think you'll have to just experiment with that because normally without voiceover, you would just get yourself on video with the, when the shutter button becomes red, doesn't it? And yeah. you then press it there yeah. is also i think that there, there used to be a way to control that also with the volume up and down keys but i haven't found that in my current phone okay so so have a play around and um if not i'll figure it out for you uh it's pierre i don't know if you can hear me yep. yes um, i can yeah hi okay um yeah thanks for the talk um uh i enjoyed it because i was uh you know when i was um partially i used to be partially sighted now i can't see you already know that but not everyone else does and when i was partially sighted i was suddenly got big into photography and it, it reminded me a lot of that i just used to find shapes interesting and um snap away at <laughs> everywhere i was i had a camera you know a phone and then later um mm. a cousin bought me a nikon l340 which was a, a nice camera but i don't um but i just wanted also to share a few um, sort of small things I came across when I was partially sighted and now I still take photos blind. I mean, one was when partially sighted, um, I had to make sure sometimes that my aspect ratio um, fitted if I wanted to print my photos, to take them to like a Tesco's or something. Uh, they do like standard sizes like four inch by six inch or something, which are the cheaper sizes to print. And oh. sometimes like my my phone or particularly the digital camera would be doing it in a four, three ratio, which was, I would end up with white edges or I'd have to cut stuff off, which was a, so I just had to make sure about that. And, um, now that I can't see, I still take pictures, but one thing is the, um, the is it the live photo on the, on the iPhone? I just, um, I turned that off, that feature off on my iPhone somehow, because I, what I do is I take pictures and I just upload them onto my computer via USB and the live photos are just kind of a waste of time for me. But I just have somebody to look through the pictures I take and we select them. And the final thing is just, if you use a, a, um, maybe, maybe other phones, but with an iPhone and, and WhatsApp, uh, there's a feature on WhatsApp to turn off. If you don't turn it off, sometimes WhatsApp can, anything that somebody sends you on WhatsApp will get saved to your photos in your, on your iPhone. Uh, yes. which is quite annoying when you're looking through your photos because you've got all these pictures of a football game or something which someone sent you on WhatsApp. So you can't figure out which ones are yours and which ones are, you know, sent via WhatsApp. So that's the last thing I came across. But otherwise, thank you very much. It was really, really nice. Thank you. No, you're, you're absolutely right about WhatsApp. I think I think you can switch that function off because I, I remember seeing that that, that they can yeah. save photos. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you I can... did set off. It's fine now. 
you, you can also switch off the live photos. I must admit, I, I find them very annoying myself. Um, so yeah, I, I, I mean, switched permanently off um, and, and it is possible to do that. The only thing, the only problem is I do sometimes because I don't use voiceover generally unless I go onto the wrong screen and then I have to, because I can't see the buttons, I then have to navigate my way back. Um, I do sometimes switch it on by accident, topping, touching the top of the screen. Then I'm like kicking myself because I've got all these live photographs when actually I wanted still ones. I mean, you can kind of make them still, but but for yourself who, who's got no sight, I can imagine that is that is very annoying. But also the on the aspect ratio, if you were able to in the photographs app, if you go into the uh, no, you haven't got an iPad, have you? But you might be able to do this on your on your phone actually. If you just go into the edit screen, there is. Um, you can have, have, have a little scroll around. There is, um, I can't remember what it's called now. It's, um, there's the rotate, no, at the top, at the top, sorry, I'm wobbling. There's a, at the top, there is a, a toggle where you can change the aspect ratio. So perhaps what you could do is at that point, instead of changing it in the settings, you could then change it in the editing mode to, they've got five by four, six by four. They've got quite yeah. a range in there so perhaps if you changed it there and you could just 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 check with mum or auntie just to make sure that you haven't cut off any bits yeah to be honest i find off. the phone the phone's a lot a lot better it was just when i when i had a, a posh camera a nikon um thing that only had sort of computer aspect ratios and when i took it to jessup the guy had had a look and he said wow it really does only have computer aspect ratios um uh -huh. but he said there's nothing you can do about it that's just the way it's built so mm -hmm. anyway Never mind, but, no oh, mind. I definitely have a go at the, um, you mentioned about, because I struggle with, with double tapping to take pictures. Uh, mm. So I'll definitely have a look into that using a volume control, because that might also help keep my finger off the lens sometimes, which kind of ruins pictures at the moment. Yes, so. you just need to be a bit careful. Find, you know, you just have to work out for yourself the best way of doing it, because it's quite easy with the volume yeah. buttons on, put your finger over the, over the lens. But I'm, sh I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah, OK, thanks so much. And I say thank you very much. I've learned and me. And um, I've particularly, you've already answered about the bursts because I've accidentally been taking bursts. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what to go about them. But I did, I've got an iPad and then I bought um, a take on Holly. But uh, to take photos on holiday and because we haven't been on holiday I haven't been taking photos with my iPhone so I'm you've definitely inspired me to do it so thank you very much you can also of course do all this on an iPad as well you know, yes you can yeah. in exactly yeah. the same way I mean I used to do it on my iPad mini obviously I wouldn't take out a big one now because I can use my phone and they they all transfer and share anyway as you know so yeah, yeah. yeah. Some things on my iPad, but you've given me extra. But uh, I'm going to try and use the phone more now. as Because like you said, you've been taking good photos just out and about going shopping. Absolutely. So. Yep. Always have, <laughs> it, always have it with me in my pocket. That's why there's quick methods. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I think what we'll do is we'll wrap it up there for, for this week. Live well and future vision. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. The Live Well events take place on the second Thursday of each month at 10am. Future Vision sessions take place on the fourth Thursday of each month at 10am and are technology events aimed at people living with sight loss. To attend the next session or to suggest future topics, please contact your local sight society who will be able to provide you with the Zoom link.